statistically significant improved pain, improved swelling, improved buckling, improved flexion, meaning the knee could bend more. Cartilage thickness increased. That's what we want. Distal femur width. That means the bone down here actually thickened up. And ACL laxity decreased. So the joint became more stable. Now I just had a collegiate basketball player come in, one of the tops, ready to be drafted. Uh, tore his ACL last year. Had it repaired surgically. Tore it again six months later. And they want to repair it again now. It's not torn this time because there's an end point when I pressed on it. But they still want to do another surgery. He refuses. So we just started him a prolotherapy. I'm expecting great results. So basically, what is prolotherapy? Injection of growth factors or growth factor stimulators promotes tissue repair or growth. Most solutions can create a brief inflammatory response. The body releases cytokines, increased growth factor activity, macrophages, those are the little cells that chew up all the debris for inflammation, chondrocytes we see, which grow cartilage. We see osteocytes that grow bone, although I don't use prolotherapy for fractures. Fibroblasts that grow tendon ligament fascia, that's thick collagen material, and joint capsular soft tissue. That's the material around the joints that holds them together, and they can become sprained also. Different irritants, phenol, tannic acid, different particulates, these are all different proliferants. Some people will take pumice, grind it down, <clears throat> make it into a powder form, and then make a solution out of it and inject that. That's a very extreme form because you get a huge inflammation from it. I had occasion to inject actual stem cells, dedifferentiated cells, out of the country. Can't do it here. Into a knee that had been smashed. Got a huge inflammation. Huge. Guy's knee healed. I don't think he needed to do that. But he loved the idea. It's very exotic to him to have stem cells injected. Very expensive, too. Chemotactic agent, things like uh, sodium moruate. When you put the sodium moruate, let's say, into a tennis elbow, it'll actually sequester fibroblasts from around the body to come to that area. Osmotics, I mentioned dextrose as a, quote, osmotic shock agent, where it draws fluid that you inject it near into the dextrose, and it actually irritates a layer of cells and starts the inflammatory cycle. Zinc sulfate, I used that on myself one time. It burns pretty good. I didn't like it. So what is collagen? It's the most common protein in animals. Major component in fibrous tissue. It's a product of the fibroblast, little tiny cells. Its fundamental unit is a molecule called tropocollagen. I'm not going to go into all these little details. There's different types. Here we see nine different types of collagen. Last time I looked, I, I saw 15 or 16. Probably by now, there might be 20 different forms that have been found. In our skin, we see type 1. We see it also in bone, tendons, and organs. Cartilage, we see type 2. We're interested a lot in the cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. So we're proliferating an awful lot of type 1 and type 2 collagen. We also will orally give people stimulants for collagen growth. Hyaluronic acid lubricates joints, chondroitin sulfate, what's the other one? Glucosamine sulfate. A lot of doctors think you can't put it in here and have it end up in a knee, but the studies show it does. Now this is very amazing because this kind of capsulates everything I talked about so far. This is how the body naturally heals. When you bang your toe, when you break an arm, when you have a tennis elbow, you have a meniscal tear in your knee, Anything that takes place, the body is healing itself by this method. This is from a physiology book. I didn't make it up. So what do we have on the left axis, vertical? Percent of maximum response. That means how much inflammation can we generate? On the axis that goes to the right, the horizontal axis, we have time. When someone injures themselves, we're starting right here. That's time zero. There's no inflammation prior to the injury. At the time of the injury, we're going to get a big inflammatory response. It lasts for about three days. We get a secondary inflammatory response. It lasts for about 10 days. If we look under a microscope at day three at that tissue after an injury, we're going to see collagen starting to form. We're going to see inflammatory cells first. 
If you look in my book, Prolotherapy Living Pain Free, you're going to see actual pictures under a microscope. I think it's page 12, I'm not sure, of the actual cells starting to grow. Forms beautiful new collagen after about 90 to 100 days. So when we inject you with a proliferant, what we're trying to do is emulate and repeat this process. People come in all the time and go, I'm already inflamed. Don't inflame me more. doesn't make sense. The problem is most people, when they're inflamed chronically, don't get to this peak. The body's trying to get here, but it doesn't generate enough inflammation to create the collagen regrowth. So that blunted response might be up this high. They're in chronic pain. Prolotherapy will come in. It'll kick it up. It doesn't last long. The worst thing people generally have is stiffness for a few hours or till the next day. When my wrist was injected, first time I had prolotherapy at a medical conference, stiff for about 24 hours. I was warned about that. The doctor who did it said, you're going to be stiff. I'm going to do a really strong solution. You're going to be stiff. He says, but in 24 hours, you're going to be better. I was very, very stiff. I was frightened. I thought, this feels exactly like the first injury on the golf course. I thought this guy made it worse. I was watching the clock. Came back to the seminar the next day. Right about 24 hours, the pain broke, and about 50% of the pain was gone that I had initially. I was amazed. I then injected my own wrist a few times once a week. Pain was completely gone. I have re-injured my wrist several times since, and I use prolotherapy, and I'm usually better the next day. All right, so this is the back of the neck. If I'm looking at the back of someone's neck, I'm going to see these vertebrae. What Hackett did, George Hackett, the doctor I mentioned in the 30s in Chicago, was he injected noxious stimuli into different parts on the vertebrae. And what he found was in this spot, it referred up here to the head, to the eye. In this spot down here, when he injected there, it referred down the arm into these fingers. Now, when someone has what we call paresthesias, or funny feelings or pain that comes into this area, we call it carpal tunnel syndrome. Does that mean it's carpal tunnel syndrome? No, it could be. Most cases that I see, it's not. It can be referral patterns or trigger points coming from the vertebrae. Also, the annular ligament that lives right around here in the elbow, if someone has these kind of feelings and you press here, often it will light that up. That's a diagnostic test to show, fix the ligament. This goes away. It can also be coming from a herniated disc in the neck or a facet joint hypertrophy or arthritis in the neck. But we're always looking to heal things in this way because this is the simple way. Keep the knife out. Use the needle. Much less invasive. No recovery time. People come in the office. They get prolotherapy. They walk out and go back to work. I've been known to play tennis right after I've gotten it or go play golf. So it's not something that bothers me a whole lot. This area is the back, and I'm going to show you where they refer to. This is a technique that's done. When we introduce a needle and we have several spots to hit, we prefer not to keep poking skin in different parts because it's the skin that's the most sensitive. Now, we use ethyl chloride, which is a cold spray, so it anesthetizes the skin, but still people become irritated with needles. So what I will do if it's the low back, I'll inject in a certain spot, I'll withdraw the needle but not pull it through the skin, redirect the needle so I can hit five or six spots with one needle poke. Makes patients a lot happier. This is a, another area that we do. Most of back pain comes right there, from the top of the back of the pelvis to the L4 and L5 vertebrae, the transverse process, and that is called the ilio-lumbar ligament. Ilio means the pelvis, lumbar means these vertebrae. This is the low back. Hackett did this too. Dr. Hackett injected up here in these ligaments. What did he find? Pain down the leg into the foot in different areas. Okay? What does that mean to you? What's the take-home message from that? If you have pain down a limb into the head, don't think surgery is going to get rid of it. Think of this first. I had a gentleman, a lawyer, come in who had very, very severe headaches. He had a herniated disc in his neck. His surgeon said, if you don't get your neck cut and fixed, you're going to have headaches like this the rest of your life. 
now in him i started with a steroid injection the back of his head